The, well, the pathologic workup of lung adenocarcinoma these days gets more and more complicated, um, in large part because there's a, a wide variety of means to gain tissue for a diagnosis. Uh, some are done through transthoracic needle core biopsies, which are often done under CT guidance. Uh, some are done by the interventional pulmonologists, um, either through a transbronchial biopsy or through the um, endoscopic ultrasound guided or endo, uh, yeah, the endobronchial um, ultrasound guided biopsies or EBIS. Um, and then, you know, in rare occasions, you still need to uh, make the diagnosis at the time of a planned resection. So a frozen section will be performed prior to the surgeon performing or preparing the, uh, planning the, um, the lobectomy or, or whatever the resection is going to be. So once we obtain tissue, um, it's incumbent upon the pathologist to A, establish a diagnosis of malignancy, confirm that it's an epithelial tumor, that it's a lung cancer and not a lymphoma or a metastasis. And, uh, and, and then once the determination of carcinoma has been established, nowadays um, it's required to, to try and subclassify it into either adenocarcinoma or squamous cell carcinoma, and of course separating it out from the small cell carcinomas. And part of the reason for distinguishing now uh, adenocarcinoma from squamous cell carcinoma is because it will, depending on which particular type it is, it will determine which additional ancillary studies, such as molecular studies, will be performed. So for example, in our institution, um, we made the decision in conjunction with the uh, oncology uh, faculty, as well as the multidisciplinary tumor board, that we would perform molecular testing upfront on all new, newly diagnosed adenocarcinomas of the lung. So that involves performing um, the ALK and ROS1 gene rearrangements testing by FISH, fluorescent in situ hybridization. We do the PDL1 testing by immunohistochemistry. And we also then will uh, send tissue for uh, mutational testing, um, usually through the next, gen or next generation sequencing techniques. For all new squamous cell carcinomas, we will um, automatically do PDL1 testing, but not the, uh, not the other types, unless requested by the oncologist for very specific indications. So I think it's incumbent then upon pathologists to attempt to distinguish adenocarcinoma from squamous cell carcinoma. And that can be done in a variety of ways using immunohistochemical staining. Although the first and foremost, you need to look at the cells. Do they show features of squamous cell or of, uh, of glandular differentiation? And then, as I say, once that step is made, then the uh, additional studies will ensue. Well, the parameters that are used in staging basically attempt to determine the degree of spread, whether it be local or distant um, spread. And so that can be done either prior to a planned resection or at the time of a resection procedure. Um, nowadays, it, it, the interventional pulmonologist will sample the mediastinal lymph nodes, both the N1 stage and attempt to try and uh, sample N2 nodes, um, so that not only can they establish the diagnosis of carcinoma, but then they can establish that this is a stage two or a stage three. Um, when we receive a resection specimen, uh, whether it be a lobe or by two lobes or sometimes the entire lung, along with that will come the lymph nodes that we remove from the hyalur region as well as the peribronchial lymph nodes. But the surgeons will also sample the mediastinal nodes and the subcarinal nodes, the so-called N2 station nodes. And so then a, a, a formal staging can take place using the guidelines of, uh, uh, of the established uh, cancer societies. This will then allow the, the clinicians to add whether or not there's metastatic disease, because some of that information is not available to us, and to determine the final clinical stage of the patient. Um, and then that will then, of course, determine adjuvant therapies and other considerations.